Hello everyone, Gclef here, and uh, I've been doing a lot of comments on this video, so I figured I'd just make my own video explaining what I'm talking about. Um, this is a video that claims that the Egyptians had not only electricity, but the light bulb. And basically, there's kind of a bad explanation here. I'll try to help you shortly. So here's the video. It's being shown. You can touch it, but here. The, the giants here are the ancient Cretans. They're being picked as giants. Now, we, we'd say giants? to people, oh, is it symbolic or is it actual? Why does it have to be either or? Why can it not be both? They could have been giants, but giants of mine. Uh -huh. Okay, wow. depicted. Showing here what obviously Chris first pointed this out in 90, 1998 in the uh, Giza power plant. This is a crook's tube, obviously. Again, some people will say, and I won't mention names, that this is just symbolic. Why does it have to be both? It shows a knowledge of electricity that was there. Why, if it's symbolic, do you have a wire being plugged into a box? I thought that was you. Of course. Yeah. And this is the backbone of Osiris. Oh. The, the Jed pillar. Jed. Jed pillar. Where they come to the name, uh, used in Arabic today in, in Egypt, Jeddah means grandpa. Papa, uh, Hakim was always called Jeddah. Jeddah. Jed pillar. But what it is, the backbone of Osiris also represents a spinal column. Electricity being produced. This is producing electricity. Clearly. So does this one relief prove that they had electricity? Well, basically what I'm going to do really quickly is break down what th what he's saying and what people of this theory subscribe to, and then we're going to analyze it and talk about basically its feasibility and its applications in, well, basically Egyptian life. Okay, so now you're looking at the relief itself. Um, basically, this is just one photo I got off the internet. It's a macro version. You can find close-ups of this relief, um, so I suggest you check those out too. So basically the claim here is you can see these giant things that kind of look like eggplants, and the claim is that those are light bulbs, and that there's a wire going, if you look to the left of the image, there's a wire going specifically to a box there. And you'll also notice that uh, to the right of that you have the Jeddah pillar, which looks deceivingly a lot like the bottom of a light bulb. And uh, we're just going to ignore the whole giants and knowledge thing and all this other jazz because basically we're talking about the feasibility of this. I don't want to get into any folklore other than what we're concerned in, namely what this relief actually is. You'll also notice the interpreter here um, interpreted it not as a light bulb but as a crook's tube and I'll go into what a crook's tube is and what it takes to make one and same thing with the light bulb and then we're gonna compare that with the feasibility of using it in ancient Egypt so in our study here we're not really interested in what a crook's tube even does we're interested in what makes one and would the Egyptians have access to such resources? Um, here, basically, I just threw up the Wikipedia article here, just so that way you guys could, you know, have a little basic understanding of it. Um, it more or less requires a couple magnets, not to mention electricity, which we're kind of, I'm going to ignore. So the foremost problem here is that the Egyptians only had access to natural magnets which is called magnetite it's just a type of rock they w didn't have the types of magnets that were required for a crook's tube which were invented centuries later so now let's examine the more popular view that it depicts light bulbs and not crook's tubes so they certainly could have blown the simple bulb that's for sure uh, but when it comes to the filament they had access to things like bamboo, uh, which was actually used in the early 20th century as a filament, but it was the filament inside of a bulb that had an inert gas in it, a rarefied gas. And since no one discovered xenon uh, until quite some time later, that kind of rules out the idea that they were able to Put any kind of gas into it um, and this is basically how light bulbs are made today as well so let's also look at the practical reasons why 
you wouldn't even if you had this ability you wouldn't want to and also let's uh, examine the whole power source issue a subsequent claim to um, basically back up the other claim by anyone arguing that for example aliens made the light bulbs or even the Egyptians themselves made the light bulbs always look to the Baghdad battery as something that um, you know would have powered such a thing and from my research I've found that it can only generate two volts so and that doesn't really translate into watts there's a formula so if you really want to find out go into Google and just look up uh, the formula to change volts into watts it involves amperage as well so uh, it's it's fairly complex but we don't need to go into it basically the practicality here is that you're not going to run a light bulb on two volts of course you could hook up a series and uh, you know light up a few bulbs and if you're using this for construction projects you don't have to light up the whole building only one part of it but when you sit down and really think about it um, there's a lot of manufacturing involved here we have to make the bulbs we have to make the filaments and since they couldn't have rarefied gases they'd be very primitive bulbs um, and they wouldn't really receive much power from these batteries so it'd be a lot easier for me as the guy building the thing to just light a torch and not go through this cumbersome process and also add on that cumbersome process to the other processes that I already need that are basic like providing food to my workers, getting workers, medicine, um, you know, housing and stuff near whatever project I'm doing. So it really is, an, is just an impracticality, even if it were possible, on the 2-volt Baghdad battery. Furthermore, since we're now able to understand ancient Egyptian and have been for some time, we understand not only their theology, but their um, religious depictions. And this happens to be a religious depiction depicting the beginning of the universe. So now I'm just going to play a little bit of footage from Ancient Aliens Debunked about this relief and its subsequent events. This relief is not so mystical if you have a little understanding of Egyptian art and religious symbols. This is a variant depiction of the creation of the world in Egyptian mythology. The Egyptians believed that before anything else existed, there was a vast primordial sea of nothingness. They believed that the first thing to emerge from this sea was a lotus flower. This is probably because the lotus closes at night and sinks underwater. In the morning, it re-emerges and blooms again. It was believed that the lotus flower then gave birth to the first god who was often associated with the sun. This relief was done after the god Atum was merged with the sun god Ra and thus became Atum Re. Atum, the god who created everything else after this point, is actually represented by a snake. And yes, it is a snake in these reliefs, not light bulb filaments. You can actually see the eyes and other elements of a snake if you look closely. This is pretty standard Egyptian mythology, that the lotus flower came forth first, and then the first god Atum, who was represented by a snake. Well, what about this bubble surrounding it? I will quote an expert directly on this point. Quote, Despite the variety of deities, the Egyptians conceived the origin of the world as singular. Only one god, Atum, was responsible for the emergence of the universe as a bubble of air in the vast, limitless, inert ocean and everlasting darkness of the undifferentiated primordial waters, none, that existed before creation. In other words, the universe came forth from the lotus in a bubble of air. The other elements of this picture back this interpretation up. The universal bubble is here being supported or raised up by the goddess Nun. Nun is the primordial waters, and technically it is she that raises up the lotus, atum, and everything else. This pose of outstretched hands is one of the more common motifs for Nun, and she raises and supports the universe from nothingness. In some versions of the story, the sun god represented in these scenes is Kefri, who is represented as a scarab beetle. Atum and Kefri sort of traded off being aspects of Ra in Egyptian mythology. So in essence, in more common versions of this scene, you have none, the primordial waters, lifting up the solar barge of Ra, 
or its first journey across the sky. And this explains why the exact same poses are seen in this creation scene at Dendera. They are also depicting Nun raising up the universe out of her waters. This idea is very, very common. You can see other images of Ra emerging from the primordial lotus as well. The idea that the ancient Egyptians used electricity is something that is not even hinted at anywhere in the Egyptian records. And if you believe ancient aliens, they were not just using electricity, but vacuum tubes, which requires high amounts of electricity as well as rarefied gases like argon. And if this was the case, we should expect to find some mention of this somewhere. This is the Temple of Hathor at the Dendra complex where this relief can be found. And I'm showing you this because um, a lot of the people who think that the light bulbs existed believe that it was because you couldn't light a torch inside. And as you can see in this particular complex, it's very easy to get oxygen. So oxygen is in good supply here. So that oxygen supply obviously accommodates for this next image, which is before and after cleaning photos of the temple ceiling. And as you can see, there was tons of soot there. Now, there's this circular argument that a lot of the uh, theorists get into where they say, oh, well, it wasn't oxygenated enough to burn torches then. And usually they're referring to the pyramids, but they don't realize that they're talking, in this case, about the Temple of Hathor. Um, and anyway, they'll say, oh, well, those marks there, that's from the other explorers who came centuries later. So they're basically saying two things at once. They're saying, well, there wasn't oxygen there for the Egyptians, but there was for the explorers, which makes no sense. So I just wanted to kind of address that little circular logic that proponents of the light bulb theory use. So the main question here is when somebody looks at these things, why are they interpreting it this way? Why does it have to be a light bulb? Why can't it be anything else? And subsequently, why are people making these claims and are there alternative motives behind them? Let's look at this from another perspective, a more modern one. See, we're so used to light bulbs because they've been around for a hundred years that it seems like simple technology. So here, I'm giving you the character of Z or Z makes that same sound. This is the hieroglyph of it. It is also sometimes an S. There's no need for you to learn how to read this thing. Um, this is just something that we would see in pretty much any Egyptian document, including carvings. So to me, this looks a little, you know, I was trying to think, well, there's got to be something that looks also like modern technology. And to me, just quickly, I found that this kind of looks like a stylus, like a pen stylus that you'd use on your Palm Pilot or your iPad or your Nintendo DS or what have you. So now I'm using my assumption to assume that all of the Egyptians had styluses for their iPads and their iPod Touches and Nintendo DS's and what have them. So basically what I'm doing is I'm basing my assumptions on more assumptions. There is no hard fact. I'm not saying that this is part of a language. I'm just saying it looks like a stylus. So here it's the same thing with that particular interpretation of this relief. You're using your assumption that the Baghdad battery was used to power these quote-unquote light bulbs to verify your assumption that these are indeed light bulbs, when in fact it's a depiction of the beginning of the universe. So if you still believe in this theory, look up the ancient Egyptian religion. I once believed this crap, but obviously it's all untrue. I've seen other things akin to this, such as claiming that certain tool markings couldn't be made by tools that a certain civilization had, etc. And the joke is, is that when it comes to this stuff, a lot of the research is readily available. So these people are either, whoever claims, for example, the ancient astronauts, uh, you know, made Pumampuku or something, hasn't actually done any research. And I assume that's because if they did, they'd find out that all their assumptions were pretty much wrong. 
And that's kind of what's happening here. But why would somebody want to perpetuate that? Well, obviously because they can make money off it. Ancient aliens on that History Channel obviously made them a lot of money. And it also gained the theory a lot more proponents. So anyway, keep an eye out and I'll catch you later.